And today on the bench I'm looking at a Technics SUX502. I'm hoping this is a quick repair. It's from the 90s, it's a Technics. It's probably just dry joints. I don't need to put any components in it whatsoever. Now I've had quite a few of these in before. These are favourites for eBay trading and this is one of those in fact. It was sent out working perfectly, buyers received it and it, there's no sound output. And these amplifiers form part of a stacker system. And this one's quite good, it's got digital input for added trouble. This one's a bit hot. The front panel's quite tidy really, it's got analogue controls for balance, bass and treble. Then the rest of it's digital, the volume knob is digital, it's just an encoder. It doesn't require too much attention really, as long as the numbers aren't jumping around. And around the back there's loads of inputs, it's got the phone inputs, an integrated amp. These are a common trap, if these links are missing the thing won't work at all. I've made a few of these over the years. I'm hoping this isn't significant that channel A is, has been used and channel B hasn't. Especially when you see the switches around the front, because speakers A are off. That would be on. Please don't let that be the fault. Well, apparently there's no sound output there. Let's find out exactly how bad it is. Let's pick my favourite test leads. I fit my high-tech cable adapters and little uh, panel pins. I sometimes send these things out with the pins still in. Oh, that didn't quite get it. Put the grounds on there. And the positives on there. I'm going to start with the CD input. Just sort of traditional, as long as it's an analogue one. So that's all ready to rock and roll from behind. No problems here. No jumping at all. Great. There's no output but I'm not in CD mode. And <laughs> there's still no output. Oh. So here's what they said, there's no output. Let's get the lid off. Rather thoughtfully the screws have already been removed by the owner. Great. Well the boards in here are immaculate. I don't think this has had a lot of use. And normally around here there's some sort of browning of the board. This is the input board with all the channel switching and the phono preamp and that. This board is for the channels that have an in and an out. And this is for the handling the video. It's just a buffer, just passes the signal in and out. And on the heatsink right in the middle you see the stereo power amplifier module, the SBI3204. Good news is, a favourite place for dry joints around here, especially these transistors here. Although these normally prevent the thing powering up at all. I also know the back panel's got to come off before you do anything else, so that's a lot of screws to get through. Here he goes. Don't forget to unplug the fan. Just have to flip that up. Pull that out. Come on. There we go. Let's get a screwdriver in there. Just ease these up. If they'll come up. Come on. Let's get these balls out now. Otherwise I'll be right in the way. Oh! <laughs> I need to pull that straight off. Most of the time, as I mentioned, these are afflicted with dry joints, especially along here. Anything along the heatsink is needs to check in, especially these transistors here. These run a bit warmer, as you can see the board is slightly yellowed there. It tends to bother the solder, which I think might be early lead free solder. I've mentioned it before and I reckon it's crap solder. Yeah, so I can almost see daylight around that one.
the more you stare at these, the more you spot. And this is another favourite spot for dry joints. It's where the little power supplies are. Well, I reckon that's all of them. Can't see any more. Have a good look round. <laughs> even down by the sockets. Always worth checking those, although I found them to be quite reliable on these. If anything the boards snap. <laughs> I reckon it's worth trying it. Just at this stage, you never know your luck. Just going to those little pegs. Give it a little shove. There we go. Pop a couple of screws in. Just to hold it straight. Pop this board back, just had a look, no dry joints showing there. Same goes for the preamp board, looks fine. Jiggle this on, <laughs> come on. Get the transformer power in. So fiddle this one is. See how we did? Power on. Well we had the relay click in then. Still no sound. <laughs> well that's why. Kind of speakers A and B on. Mine's working well. Oh, balance is a bit crusty. Oh yeah. Bass is alright. So is treble. Okay. Hands working. Well the main amp board's good, so I'm going to put a few more screws back in because we don't need to fetch it out again. So that's analog CD working, work my way up the board. It's the tuner input. Lock it on. Well, that's good. Put the tape input. Got VDP, is that video disc player? That takes you back, doesn't it? And VCR, the old tape player. For the final input we need to knock this down a bit. 5 millivolts, next, amplitude 5 millivolts. And into the phone over we go. Well I'm happy with that. Um, there's one nemesis to these, the digital input. I'm just going to use this natty little A to D converter. It's cheap and it works great. We'll go with the CD input first. But it should detect the digital input. And it does. We've got sample frequency, 44 kilohertz. Give the tin box a little shake test. No problems. Try the data input, it's another optical one. The digital auxiliary, the full house, everything working. 
check these base things work while the buttons are working good time to put this little board back in well I can tell you now we've finished with the back panel so I can put all the screws back in here Put this check speaker B output. Well, that's passive functional test. Just that balance part to sort out. Just got to bit the front panel off. Three screws at the bottom. Tease that off there. Just pull the knobs off, mind you. Just put a cloth over this corner so I'm <laughs> scratching the panel up. And then three screws to take this off. That's the front panel, so there's the main brain. <laughs> works on this one and these pots here just a little bit crusty it's going to give them a little spritz with some deoxid you have to get the board out to do this because <laughs> you have to get the pipe down the top and you just couldn't do it just work that same with these Turn it upside down, let it drain out for a little bit. Whilst I've got it in my hand, I'm going to give this a look over for dry joints. Tend not to suffer so much of them on the front panel. As does this panel. No problems here. That's good to go back, I think. few knobs to put on there. Just a final test of that balance pot. Oh, beautiful. Like a new one. <laughs> Well, that's a quick repair, how I like them. Let's clean the grubby mitts off it. <laughs> Let's cover the vents up as well. <laughs> Warranty void. <laughs> I don't even give a warranty. Unless you ask really nicely. Well there we go. That's one of the fastest times to repair. Catch you next time.